Hello everyone, this is Tactics Test Tuesday and this week, this is filth, absolute filth. We're back and today we've got a tactic from Craig Shaw, McPhail Shaw on Discord and Twitter and socials and stuff. He put this on one of the Discords, I saw the shape, the success he had in Serie A, I was like, I need to test this. And then I played against him in PvP and he kicked my ass with Wolfsburg, uh, Veghorst, Veghorst, and just some really nice passing and movements. And I was like, I really should have looked into this tactic, tested it before playing him. So this is the shape. It's it's a 4-3-3, three, three. it's a 3-4-3, three, three. it's a free fight. Like it, yeah, you can see how different it is to normal we've got two center backs a wing back on attack we've got the left wing back pushed up on support we've got a segundo volante in the dm so he's going to get further forward we've got a dlp on defense who's going to drop back cover the space the volante that sort of goes out of and we've got a mazala who should be occupying the same place as the wing back and causing an overload on that side which also has an advance forward on the left a deep, a deep line forward in the middle. He's going to drop back and sort of link up with the Volante and the Mazala. And then you've got an inside forward cutting in from the right, dribbling, driving, shooting. I mean, from someone who's watched it, it works. It definitely works. So we're going to test it. We're going to test it with PSG and then six different teams. We've gone for a good team. And then I think I've gone for the worst team in the three divisions we're testing to see how good it is. So let's go through the instructions. We've got a goalkeeper on defend with no extra instructions. We've got a wing back on attack on the right. Center defender on defend. Center defender on defend. The Savigundo Volante on attack. Deep line playmaker on defend. Mazala on support. Wing back on support. Inside forward on attack. Deep line forward on support. And an advance forward on attack. Interesting, no player instructions at all. You're just letting them do what their natural position does. It's an attacking mentality. We've got attacking width is wide. They're passing into space, so they're looking to just get the ball ahead of the attackers. We're playing out of defence. But then it's slightly more direct, passing directness, getting up to that front three quickly. Uh, much higher tempo, and we're running at the defence. When possession has been lost, we're not counter-pressing or regrouping, just letting the team do their own thing. And then we're countering when we win the ball and the goalkeeper is distributing to the back four. Then out of possession, higher line of engagement and a higher defensive line, defensive wood standard. We're using tighter marking and then pressing intensity is more urgent. It looks like we've got some set pieces set up. So you've got the corners defending on the right and the left. Then with the attacking throw-ins, we've got a uh, going short to the striker on the left, then on the midfielder on the right, and there was nothing that's standard. Standard for the defending, and the free kicks are all standard as well. So as always, we tested PSG, so we can see the benchmark and see how good it does in Champions League as well. In Germany, we've gone for Wolfsburg and Mainz. Mainz uh, were predicted to finish in the bottom four or five, I think, when I clicked on it. And also Wolfsburg because it's who Craig is controlling in our PvP season. There's eight of us in the Bundesliga trying to win, beat each other. So we thought we'd see how it would do with the default team. In Holland, we've gone for PSV and FC20. PSV obviously won the challenge Ajax. Uh, in 20, when when you load up the game, are predicted 17th. Uh, although it's 11th there, they were predicted 17th. And then in Spain, we're going with Bilbao and Granada. As you see, Granada are one of the relegation candidates. And Bobal round about the sort of Europa League, Europa Conference, see if we can push them on into the Champions League. So we'll run through the season, I'll show you some highlights, and then we'll get to the results.
before we see what's happened, I must say this is probably the most diverse set of results I think I've ever seen. Success, mediocrity, absolute failure across the board. Let's address the first thing first. Two teams missing there. Both Bundesliga teams have sacked us. We'll start with Mainz, who have been relegated. When did they sack us? 25th of May. Okay, so they've let it run. 29th of May. So right at the end of the season, a 3-0 loss to Hamburg. Uh, that was in the playoffs, so he definitely gone down. You know, we won 2-1 the first game and then lost 3-0. If you look at Wolfsburg, they sacked us on the 19th of December. Uh, puts us around. Oh, yeah, that's a bad run. After the Stuttgart defeat, after was the Bayern Co. And you, you hadn't won since October. Uh, sacked us. They finished 11th. I think they won the cup as well, didn't they? Like, they won, yeah, not with us, but they won the Pokal and got into Europe, fair play. And squad wise, yeah, no one, no one scoring goals there. So Germany, failure. Let's move on. Neymar, top goal scorer, 37 goals. Highest average rating, Kozawa in there as well, third. De Maria with 12 assists. Neymar, most player of the matches. Navas, 24 clean sheets. Neymar with 50 goals in 46 games. I mean, that's the most I've seen him score. Uh, Mbappe, 23 and 11. I think Mbappe played as the, advan uh, the inside forward. Mostly. Not played as striker. I was wrong. Uh, first time I've not seen he's playing as the, maybe the DLF, probably. Uh, it's, I, I wish, there's one thing I wish for in front of manager. If it showed you exactly where they were playing, like when you go into the tactic side, like I want to see that how many times was he advanced forward? How many times was the DLF? That's what I want to see. Yeah, it's got assist wise De Maria was 16, Bernat with 13 from left back, uh, that advanced left back, Paredes, Mbappe 11, Neymar, like loads of assists across the place. 163 goals overall, which is excellent. Then 3.16 goals per game, way above the expected goals. Expected goals against is over 0.5. Which you would see if I move my head. 19.24 shots per game. That's pretty damn good. Okay, so we've seen that it can be successful as well. Over to Holland and the Eredivisie with PSV and second. You're quite a far way away from Ajax, aren't you? That's disappointing. You've finished 11 points behind Ajax. Let's look at the breakdown. Decent defensive, 32, they conceded 28, didn't score as much. You, it's the draws, isn't it? The draw, you've lost nearly as many, you've lost less than Ajax. It's the draws that have done you in. The attacking mentality as well, disappointing. We're going to get to 20, look at 20, that's that's encouraging. We've got Philip Max, 7.78, How leads the league in the average rating. Is he playing as the advanced wing back? Yeah, he is, that's... Shows you that's the key position. So if you're going to use this, make sure to get someone really good there. Max, 17 assists as well. Like 16 crossing, acceleration, positions all right. Like he, don't worry about defensive stats. Get someone with like composure, decisions. That's what you want. That's why he's done really well there. Yeah, 11 player of the matches for Max as well. Daniel Malin, 20 goals. Zahavi, 15. Philip Max got 14 goals from left back. Wow. A 27 assists for the season. That's crazy. That's that's ridiculous. 103 goals for the season. Team performance, 2.18 goals. Just above the expected. Expected goals again, so just under 1. 20.29 shots per game. Wow, like, how did they not win the league? This is ridiculous. Like, if you get a couple of more signings in there and just sort out the draws, and like if you control them as well, you... You can maybe change things up if it's not going well. You can go a bit more offensive, maybe put two advanced forwards on, who knows. You can just tweak little things to turn some of those draws into wins and bridge that gap. FC20 we saw came fourth. That's incredible. Into the Conference League. Top scorer is Abbas. Is that Abbas? Let's look at him. Like it. He's got those three dribbling finishing first touch above, above, above 11. Fast. Yeah, he's going to do some damage. I assume he played. Yeah, played all of them as a striker. Probably the advanced forward, I'd imagine. Uh, Vaclav Sherny with 13. Perea with 10. Assist-wise, you've not got a, a feel at max, but Sherny with 9. Brahma with 8. Illich with 7. Only 62 goals scored overall. That's 
it's not great. How did they manage to come so high? But you can see there with the team report, just under two goals per game, which is above the expected. The expected goals against just one. That's just just worse than PSV, which is why they didn't concede. And 15.68 shots per game. Yeah, they only lost one game more than PSV, so really good performance from 20. It shows you it can work with an underdog as well, which is what people want. Over to Spain, lastly, and Bilbao have come third in La Liga, ahead of Atletico Madrid, 79 points. Only, only 10 off the champions, and only two off Barcelona, and the runners-up in the Spanish Cup and the Spanish Super Cup. Wow, what a season from Bobao. That's incredible. We'll, we'll get to Granada because let's not lie, that's an amazing performance in them as well. Uh, clean sheets 21 from Unai Simeon. Was a fantastic performance there. No one else in the, the other ratings. 22 goals for Anaki Williams, and then nine for the others, Munay and Nero Garcia. Sis wise, 10 from Berenguer, 9 from Lopez, 9 from Murain. Like solid, solid across across the team there. Uh, Unai Simeon, your highest rating, and then defenders, like solid again. I think it's shown this is a really solid defensive tactic. It looks crazy going forward. It's really solid in defense. 85 goals scored, only 1.84 goals per game, still above the expected. The expected goals against is higher than what they actually conceded. Maybe they got a little bit lucky, but it's fine. And 15 shots per game. Lastly, we have Granada, who have finished seventh and made it into the Europa Conference League from being relegation candidates. That's fantastic. They got knocked out at the fourth qualifying round of the Europa League and third round of the Spanish Cup but they've made Europe again. As you'll have seen, Luis Suarez, 24 goals, just two behind Messi in the league. Incredible. He got 32 and 44. And then uh, Darwin Mikas with 11. Luis Mila leads away with 11 assists. Victor Diaz with 9. 79 goals, which is which we're not far behind Bobao, to be fair. Then 1.61 goals per game, just above the expected. Expected again, slightly higher, and just 13 shots. You can see they're weaker, but they've done really well. I think defensively, that's helped them reach that that platform. Really interesting results there. Like PSG dominated. PSV did really well, apart from the draws. There's 20 in Granada. It's like, is this is this an underdog tactic? Is that what is that where you get the benefits? But then PSG have shown that if you get the right players in the right positions. You can absolutely smash it. Like if you get Mbappe playing as the advance forward and not somewhere else, and you may play Neymar as the inside forward, do you get even better? Yeah, really, really, really good results from uh, Craig's tactic, which is the Segundo Volante, the 4 3 3. Yeah, I love a good asymmetric. I love people thinking outside the box, using different positions. This is really interesting. So let us know if you're going to try it. Check out Craig's stuff. I'll put the links down below. You download the tactic, try it, test it, tweak it. Would some player instructions make it better possibly? Would it make it worse? What would you change? What would you advise Craig to try? Let us know in the comments below. Drop a like on the video if you haven't already. And we'll be back next week for some more tactics testing. So for me, Andrew, it's bye for now.